Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 17th of November and the weekly market update. Now, equity markets probably come off their worst week since August. US markets fell 2.7%. We obviously had the very tragic events over the weekend in Paris, um, which markets do appear to be by and large shrugging off. Um, we did see a bit of a spike in gold prices on the back of that, but the outlook for gold, and this is what I'm going to be focusing on today for um, this week's update, the outlook for gold still appears to be fairly negative. Currently, it's down 9% so far year to date. S&P 500 is pretty much flat on the year, and yet the dollar, the US dollar, continues to gain in strength pretty much across all of the commodity sector, including, including crude oil, gasoline, copper, silver, platinum, palladium. But it's gold prices I really want to focus on here. And I'm going to be looking at a very short term view, looking at the key support levels on the downside, but also the, the long term support levels as well. So I'll be looking at a daily chart, a weekly chart and a monthly chart. So we're going to start with this daily chart. And what I've done here is I've taken the highs from this year drawn a down channel through the highs in October and we can see that there's a clear direction of travel here. The 200 day moving average is pointing lower and with the Fed minutes later this week I think it's going to be fairly instructive given the hawkishness of those minutes as to what caused the Fed to drop the line about international international and financial developments concerns about China when they were so concerned about them in September. Certainly the inflation data that we're seeing pretty much out of the US and globally is not really shifting the dial in terms of the direction of travel for gold prices. Certainly in the context of this particular chart here we can see there's a really good area of support around about $1,070 an ounce. That's where the July lows are. We bounced off that um, earlier this month. The, we saw a spike as a result of those terror attacks, but we haven't been able to get back above $1,100 an ounce. Now, the oscillator does appear oversold on the daily chart. That doesn't really mean too much. What I would like to see on that chart is for it to start to turn higher. But if we break that trend line on the downside or that support line on the downside, then we could well see further losses in the short to medium term. If we move to the weekly chart, we can see that on the oscillator there's still plenty of scope to go lower. I haven't drawn the horizontal line through the lows on the weekly chart because I want to give you an indication of the direction of travel of the highs and the lows. But certainly in the context of this chart, it's not oversold. There is scope for gold to go lower. So how low can it go? For that, we need to go to the monthly chart here. Now, I've taken it from the lows in 2008 at $682 an ounce and the highs that we saw in 2011 at 1921 But the point that I'm interested in is the lows that we saw in 2010. And that was around about $1,030 an ounce. There's a good area of support between $1,000 an ounce and $1,050 an ounce. Previous peaks but also previous support. And that previous support point was the launching point from the lows in 2010 to the peaks that we saw in 2011. So based on the, based on the premise that support and resistance reverse their roles, you've got to think that between 1,000 and 1,050 is going to be a very, very big area of support, notwithstanding the fact that it's a nice round number. So you'll get an awful lot of what I would call uh, a, an aggregation of orders around that particular level. If we break below a thousand, then we could well go an awful lot lower. So it's very much a line in the sand there at thousand dollars an ounce. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.